Hey everyone, my name is Rachel and I am one of the educators here at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab. Today I wanted to share with you a few quick facts about something known as an ROV, which I have here on the table in front of me. So ROV stands for Remotely Operated Vehicle, and one of the first things I wanted to make sure that you knew is that ROVs are driven remotely and by a remote. So this here is the remote or the control box for the ROV that I have sitting on the other side of my table, and they are driven at a distance from each other. So this would be topside, somewhere above the water. If you were taking this offshore, this would be on the boat. If you're using this from the side of the dock or the side of the pool, you would be above the water, and the ROV would be down in the pool or below the boat in the water. So they're driven at a distance from each other, and they are able to do this and do it live because of this tether right here. So this connects the controller down to the ROV, and this would span the distance between the two. So you think about deep ocean, this would have to go the whole distance between the ROV and that pilot. And this allows them to do it live, which is really, really neat and one of the cool things about ROVs. The second thing I wanted to tell you about ROVs is that they are designed to be neutrally buoyant in the water. Now if you think about buoyancy, right, you're floating in some sort of fluid. Now the ROV is going to be floating in water, that's the fluid that we're going to operate this in, and we want it to hover in the middle of that water column. We don't want it to sink all the way to the bottom, and we don't want it to float on the surface, but to be able to maneuver right in the middle of that fluid. So if I show you my ROV, you can see the floats here on the top that helps it to achieve that buoyancy and this offsets the weight of the ROV or its ballast. Now you could add ballast to whatever frame you designed. Mine's made out of PVC so it's pretty light and water flows through it but it does weigh it down. So I had to add this amount of float to help it to hover neutrally. Some of the bigger ROVs they'll calculate the amount of syntactic foam they need to offset the amount of weight of the frame itself and what all tools they're going to put on that ROV for that particular mission. And this is syntactic foam. It kind of sounds like wood, but it's made to be neutrally buoyant under pressure. Now, the third thing I wanted to tell you about ROVs is that they are always made for a mission, for a purpose. Now, they might have hydraulic arms. Maybe they're down there to collect a species or a sample. Maybe they're looking for a trigger type of rock, so it's a geological sample. Or maybe they are trying to capture a live species. Maybe it's a sea anemone, so they're going to have some sort of really cool, soft robotic arm to capture those. Other things we might use ROVs for is in the oil and gas industry. They might use them to lay pipeline or to weld or do anything they might need to do underneath the surface of the water, underneath those rigs. Very important job for them. In marine archaeology, they help them to use to explore and locate some of those lost shipwrecks and to maybe bring samples back up to the surface. And then my favorite use of an ROV is simply for exploration. So we've explored less than 5% of our oceans, and one of the ways that we are getting down there in marine science and learning more about them is through these really neat tools called ROVs. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have learned more about ROVs today. If you want to check out our website, www.dizzle.org, you can learn even more. We have an ROV programs webpage as a part of the Discovery Hall programs. We have information about a teacher workshop, student ROV competitions, and an ROV class we offer. And if you head over to the Boardwalk Talk page on the Sea Lab website, you can also learn about the Fisheries Ecology Lab and how they use ROVs in their work offshore setting the artificial reefs of Alabama. Thanks again. Have a great day.